kind of a, a different day around here for a Tuesday. Uh, all our players are off um, with the election, and uh, we've visited about that a number of times and excited for our guys to be able to express their uh, opinions and views on, on the election and, and being able to vote. We uh, had a practice on Sunday, uh, coming off a long road trip, came back and, and uh, had about an hour practice on Sunday evening. Didn't have a lot of time to gather a bunch of information as far as Oklahoma State game planning wise, but uh, we were able to get a few things done. And then uh, uh, yesterday, which would have been typically our first practice of the week, just uh, basically in helmets and, and jerseys, we put on uh, shoulder pads and, and had a typical Tuesday on Monday. And we were able to get some good work done uh, with the guys. And so from a coaching staff standpoint, we're a little behind um, from a game planning uh, perspective, and we're kind of getting caught up on that throughout the day today, and then we'll reconvene with the guys tomorrow and have a pretty heavy practice, um, just putting all the final game plans in that we would typically do on Tuesday, we'll do on Wednesday now. So an interesting uh, week uh, as far as how we have to handle it, but uh, I know the guys are, are handling it well. Start with Kels. Hey, Chris, I know Oklahoma State was a tough team when you played them last season, but do you feel like they're more complete or an improved group this season? Well, they're a good football team this year for sure. I, you know, we've watched cut-ups of, of last year, and they handled us really relatively easily at their place um, last year. And uh, they're a really experienced defense uh, that flies around, very aggressive. They don't miss tackles. They're going to blitz you, um, going to put constant pressure on you. And then offensively, we have our hands full because they have – they can beat you at all at every level in, in the fact that the quarterback can beat you with his arm or his feet. Uh, two great running backs, one everybody knows about, but they have two very talented running backs. And then, you know, wide receiver, I think they have one of the best wide receivers in the country in Wallace. And so we have our hands full trying to come up with a great plan to be able to – you can't stop them, just try to slow them down. Looking back at the West Virginia game, it seemed like they had pretty good success targeting the middle of the field against your defense. Did you feel that way? And maybe what would you attribute to their success? Uh, they had success kind of in whatever ways they wanted to, to be honest with you, Kellis. Uh, we didn't play very well. And uh, give those guys credit. Uh, they were able to run the football. Whenever you're able to run the football, it opens things up to the middle because your linebackers are coming downhill a little bit more. Uh, and then the play action can get you behind. And we – you know, one play in particular, we get caught in a, in a pressure and um, kind of dropped coverage, and they got a 58-yard play, and that's that was just more of a bust than it was anything else. But we need to play better on 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 in all phases. Uh, I also want to ask you, you had an update on AJ Parker or Briley Moore. Would you expect them to play this week? Um, AJ practice limited yesterday, so that was good to see him out there. Uh, Briley, we didn't practice yesterday. Um, but uh, doing all this treatment and stuff, and I know he's starting to feel a little bit better. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll have more of an idea on Wednesday or Thursday with both those guys. All right. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. John? Yeah, Chris, uh, after having some time to reflect on some of the issues on Saturday, is it easy to chalk that game up as, hey, that just wasn't our day, or is that more indicative of like some bigger picture problems going on that you guys have? Good question. I, I don't know. Um, we'll find out how we respond when, you know, when adversity strikes, you're going to find out the character and resolve of your guys and you've got to attack the adversity. And um, um, we didn't play well. It was on the road and, and got behind and, and had a hard time digging ourselves out of it. All that being said, in the second quarter, we had our opportunities. We could have been um, in a competitive game or even potentially ahead. Uh, and, and instead they made the plays and we didn't. And so you know, you have to evaluate that and make sure that you make your corrections, but you can't just sit and dwell on it because you need to move on. And, and in this league, um, everybody has ability to, to run points up on the board and everybody has ability to, to play good enough defense and stop you. And so um, we just need to learn from it and get better and move forward. I was going to ask about Deuce, too. I know it was really the first game where he's been shut down like that this year. Was he totally himself or, or totally healthy in the game? Uh, I thought he was healthy. Yeah, he was. He was fine. Um, he didn't practice a bunch last week because of an issue, but he was healthy for the game. And once again, as talented as that young man is, you you have to find ways to take uh, him away. And and West West Virginia did that. And uh, we thought we had some creative ways to get him the football, um, but we couldn't 
have time to throw it or whatever else may have happened. And so um, once again, give uh, West Virginia um, the credit that they deserve. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. Yeah. David. Uh, yeah, Chris, I know you talked about the balance that Oklahoma State has, but I'm guessing with 296 yards last year, Chuba Hubbard has to be a focus. Can you just talk about slowing him down a little bit? Yeah. Um, we gave up the explosive play on uh, via the run last year, and, and we cannot do that to, to be successful. Um, we have to limit those explosive plays. We, we need to tackle better. We need to fit things better. We didn't fit things very well in the run game last year. Uh, and obviously, um, that's been a point of emphasis and will be continuing on throughout the week. But uh, we have to make sure that he doesn't have a huge day um, or everything opens up. If, if, if he has a huge day, then, then we're stacking the box with more and more guys and then, then creates all sorts of other issues. So um, we have to come up with a great game plan. And that's kind of what today is. You know, we were able to piece together a few things yesterday. But today, from a coaching staff standpoint, we need to go through all the tape to see what gives us the best chance to be successful. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Robert? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Coach, I, I wanted to uh, ask the need on defense. I love disruptive defensive players. When you watch the tape, Wyatt Hubert stands out. Inside technique, Drew Wiley stands out. And I've been very impressed with, with watching the play of Justin Hughes. Those three guys, especially against an offense like Oklahoma State, have to come to play on Saturday and, and talk about their ability to, uh, you know, to mess up some teams' offenses. Well, we feel one of the strengths of our team is our defensive line. And uh, you're right, Wyatt, uh, Hubert, and Drew Wiley have played really well for us. Khalid Duke's playing well, Bronson Massey, Eli Huggins. We're going to keep rotating guys in because we have to play really well up front um, to try to slow down uh, Oklahoma State a little bit. And then we're playing a number of linebackers and, and defensive backs, and we have to continue that rotation because you know, Oklahoma State wants to play 100 plays against you, and we need to make sure that uh, we can stay fresh with our guys. And that's one thing that we have been able to do is rotate an awful lot of guys uh, at all levels of the defense. And we're going to have to do the same thing because uh, um, it's going to be a game where, where they're going to want to run up tempo and try to get a bunch of plays. And, uh, we need to make sure we have fresh athletes in there. Your special teams have been so solid all season, and, and I think, you know, they're coming off a game where special teams hurt them in a couple of ways. Uh, but when you look at the one matchup that, to me, intrigues me, your punt return, averaging 23 yards a game, or 23 yards a return, their punting unit, which is one of the tops in the Big 12, and Hutton doesn't – he's not a big bang punter, but – he seems to have the kind of kick that keeps people from being able to return. Talk about that matchup, their return, uh, your return unit and their punt unit. Yeah, well, hopefully we can get them to punt a few times. That's the first thing. Um, but uh, you're 100% right. We have to do a great job at the line of scrimmage to get our punt return started. And that's what we always talk about is – just getting it started. If we can get it started and not get it disrupted by guys going down quickly and forcing a fair catch and those things, Phillip's a pretty talented guy. And our guys understand uh, leverages and using their tools in the blocking and blocking players that Philip reads those things really well. So for us to be successful, we need to be able to flip a field somewhere along the line, whether that's a punt return, a kick return, whatever it may be, so that uh, we can get a shorter field for our offense. Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Kellis? Chris, after uh, – at the end of that second drive where you got all the way down to the goal line, after they committed the uh, penalty on the kick on the field goal, did you think at all about putting the offense back out there and going for it? Yeah, we, we did. Um, and you can easily say in hindsight we should have gone for a touchdown there um, early in the game trying to get points as well as we just had three shots from the two-yard line and, and didn't get in. And so I thought maybe from a rhythm momentum standpoint, if we take another shot and don't get in there, um, you know, maybe that would even hurt our confidence more. Um, bottom line is we can't put ourselves in that position. We're second and goal at the two or first and goal at the two, whatever it was, and, and we can't get in the end zone. We need to be able to, to score. And uh, um, that's been kind of where we've been the last few weeks. And we had a couple of short fields against KU and didn't get touchdowns and had to settle for field goals. And 
the way that we're going to play and the way we need to play is to be able to convert those into touchdowns in the red zone. So uh, whether it's that play or different plays in different games, we have to be more productive with touchdowns. Uh, I also want to ask, you said several times, um, you're not concerned about Will or his confidence. He's got that it factor. Um, what's he like in practice when he makes a mistake? Um, does he bounce right back up? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, he's, he's good uh, in that respect. I mean, obviously, Coach Klein does a great job, and we go on to the next play and, and coach on the run and, and get him schooled up, and, and we move on to the next play. But, uh, um, you know, you, you have to have a, a short memory a little bit. You know, you got to have it in the back of your mind. You can't make um, – mistakes where you're where you're turning the football over um but we still have to push the ball downfield we still have to um be able to run the correct routes so that he can get the ball out on time we have to be able to protect so that he knows that he, he's going to have a cleaner pocket to throw the football it was kind of a culmination of things whether it was maybe an errant throw uh to maybe a wrong route to maybe a bust in protection and all of a sudden hands and stuff are all over you and then you end up sometimes uh, getting a tip ball or something. And, and so, um, you know, we'll get realize this kid's a, a true freshman that's uh, playing high level football and he's learning on the run. And I just, more than anything, I like the way he handles things and like the way he handles himself and he's leading our offense, whether it's a 55, 14 win or a 37 to 10, that can't change because he has to be the catalyst that leads the offense. That's uh, Coach, what has Drew Wiley meant for your defense this year? I think he's been the MVP of our defense this, so far this year. Uh, he plays a ton of snaps. He loves to play the game, and that's what's so much fun to watch is, is Drew loves to practice. He loves to compete, loves to go to the meetings, likes to go to the walkthrough, has a great time with the guys. He's disruptive. Um, he's tough to block one-on-one. -on -one. He's he's doing things in the run game, doing things in the pass game. And, and we just – starting to design a lot of things around him um, because he is such a playmaker. And so uh, I, we knew he was going to be a good player this year. We, we were really confident in that. But um, he's been, I, I think, our most productive guy for six games and so excited that uh, in his senior season he's having this great a year. What's it say about him that he came out of, you know, the pandemic having to work out at home or on his own in better shape? ready to play, uh, took giant steps forward in terms of conditioning and preparation. Yeah, he just, uh, he's got that will and that desire to compete and, and be his best. And, you know, he was a part-time player, um, at least last year for us, the year that I had had, a, had with him because we had Mitty and, and Trey Deshaun in there. So he was a rotating guy. And I think he said, you know what, I, I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the Trey Deshaun or the Mitty that's going to be the playmaker. And, uh, um, he's a really competitive guy, and he works so hard at it, whether it's in the weight room or at practice. The kid doesn't take any plays off. And so for a younger player to watch Drew Wiley compete every day and compete on every play, uh, I think it's a great thing for a young kid to say, man, model your game off of what Drew Wiley does. How challenging is this Oklahoma State offense? You could try to take away the run. And even if you're successful, they've got a pretty darn good receiver running around. Yeah, it's really challenging. That's why we have to do a great job of what we talk about of complementary football. We have to be able to stay on the field offensively and be able to churn out first downs, even if we're maybe not getting a scoring drive. We've got to be able to take four or five minutes off the clock and get some first downs so that limits some of their uh, opportunities. We, If they're getting 100 plays, we're in trouble. And that's what they want to have. And, and so um, for us, we, we have to be able to slow down the rush. We know that. Um, you can't just sit and cover two the whole game and let them run the football. But in the same respect, is it, we have to pick and choose our chances when we're going to be aggressive, maybe run blitz, whatever it may be, because uh, you've got some receivers on the edge that can make plays. One final thing. I'm curious, did you sit in with Will Howard when he broke down the tape of the West Virginia game? And uh, how did he take it? And what did he see? Um, I'm getting a chance to visit with him a little bit today. I wasn't in the, the meeting with, uh, with Coach Klein. Um, at other engagements, but uh, he and I always get a chance during the week to visit, and today's one of those days we're going to get a chance. Very good. Thank you, Coach. You bet. we got three hands raised. We'll do those last three here, starting with Adam. Coach, other than the interceptions in the last drive in the first half, he needed a touchdown against West Virginia. Then Will Howard stepped up with that big drive and with that big touchdown 
past, just how promising would you say that drive was of Will? Well, it was good because he made some tight throws into some tight windows and we were able to move the ball down the field in a two minute setting. And then I think the thing, the one thing that impressed me the most is they took all the short routes away because um, time was running out and we were able to get behind on a post and he didn't just say, well, I just got to keep methodically moving us down the field. He took a shot on the post and uh, made a great throw. Malik got behind the corner and, and it was, it was great to see for the momentum. Uh, we just needed to keep that momentum. Our problem was they got the ball to start the second half, and it took six minutes off the clock and got a field goal, and we needed a quick stop to get the ball back to the offense so that we could maybe continue on with what we did, but uh, we weren't able to do that. Derek? Yeah, Coach, you said so far Bradley Moore is not practicing this week, or so far he hasn't practiced, but is there anyone in that tight end room that's getting additional reps because of that? It just the same ones, Sammy uh, and Nick um, will, will take have taken the lion's share of it. Connor Fox will will sprinkle in a little bit. Jax it, it can play tight end or fullback. Barta, um, we, we have a number of guys there, but Bradley's a pretty special talent, and and, and we knew he was probably going to be out Sunday, and Monday. Um, we were hoping to get him back potentially Tuesday. Obviously, Tuesday's off, so now we got to look and see where we're at on Wednesday. But uh, uh, I, I know that he is progressing. In terms of the wide receivers, would you would you kind of pin their lack of pr as much production as you'd like to see on the circumstances of the season? Because there's been a lot of disruptions with that group between transfers and COVID, or is it just lack of performance so far? I, I think it's a combination of everything um, and, and the fact that uh, we haven't um, sustained drives, and, and that's not the wide receiver's fault. That's not the quarterback's fault. That's sometimes – um, the defense because we can't get off the field. We just haven't had enough plays, I, I don't think. And you throw in the fact that uh, we've had a running back that's been pretty dynamic. And uh, when he's got the ball, some good things that have happened. And so we're going to get him the football. And we've had a tight end that's been really dynamic as well. And when you have the, the limited amount of plays that we've had, um, sometimes it doesn't go all around. And, and that's the thing that guys get, have to be unselfish and say, shoot, we're winning. We're four and two, four and one in the big 12. Uh, let's be, be happy that we're getting the W's, the, the catches, the throws may come. But uh, right now there's a couple guys that are making some big time plays. And we got to get them a football. Last one here, Robert. Yeah, coach. I'm kind of on your side on this with, with Briley Moore, and I hope he's able to play. Uh, and, and if he is, the need for him, he's not really a hidden target. Everybody knows who he is. But uh, in trying to play complementary football, like you said, his value to that offense in playing complementary football and staying on the field in your, in your estimation. He's, he's a, he moves the chains. You know, he makes the tough catch. He can catch a ball on third and eight for five yards and, and get nine and get a first down. He can block the edge at the point of attack. Uh, he does so many things. He can flex out. He can be a fullback in the backfield. Um, you, you, 100%. He's, he's a guy that makes our offense uh, so much.